Hello again. I'm Wendy J. Haney, and I'm here today to talk about the Split 9 patch. I just think this block is so pretty, and I've been having fun with 9 patches lately, so I ah, figured we'd go with this. What I discovered, though, is if you Google Split 9 patch, you're going to find a whole variety of different ones. I got mine from the Encyclopedia of Pieced Quilt Blocks. So that is the version that I'm working with when I'm talking about the split nine patch. If you want to try other variations, go out and check them out too. A lot of them are very similar. Today though, we're going to talk about this one and this one is really pretty easy to make. We are dealing with a nine patch. Yep, one, two, three by one, two, three. Three times three is nine. So we have nine squares in here. And I want to work with a nine inch quilt block because you know what? A nine patch, nine inch, it just works in my opinion. So that means if you have three squares across and it needs to be nine inches across finished, each of these need to be finished as three inch blocks. We're working with a half inch seam on each side, which means they need to be three and a half inches before we sew them in here. So when I'm working with these little blocks that are gonna go in here, these need to be three and a half inches. And it's critical for you to know your numbers because we need, in this, we need one, two, three, four, five, six. We need six half square triangles that are identical. So in that scenario, in my opinion, we're gonna do it a super easy way. And you're gonna end up with eight. Yes, if you're making a single block, uh, you're gonna have two extra half square triangles. But more than likely, you're not making a single block and you're gonna make a number of them. So getting eight at a time, eventually, ha, huh, it'll even out. So let me show you how easy it is to make this split nine patch making half square triangles super easy. To make eight half square triangles super easy, you can start with just two squares. So in this case, my finished block is using two colors. So this is gonna be super easy. So I need two colors and I'll end up with eight half square triangles that I need. In order to figure out what size square you need to start with to create your eight half square triangles, you take the finished size of your block, which is three inches, multiply it by two, which is six, and then you add one and three quarters inches. And that's what you'll find in a lot of places. Personally, I would suggest you add two inches. That gives you a little more wiggle room, especially as a beginner. Give yourself a little more wiggle room because what we're gonna do is once we get these half square triangles cut out, you're going to trim them to make sure they're perfectly three and a half inches. And if you start with an eight inch block, you end up with a little more room to be super, super accurate. Okay, so we have our two blocks. And before I put them together, what you're gonna wanna do is draw a mark corner to corner. Okay, there's that one. And I'm using a six by 12 inch Omni Grip Ruler. It's just kind of like the perfect size, not too big, not too small. Okay, there we go. Hopefully you can see that. There we go, I have the X marks the spot. <laughs> now we're gonna put our right sides together of our two eight inch squares and don't need to be super, super exact, but if you go with a, a seven three quarter inch block, you want it to be more exact because you don't have a ton of wiggle room. And then I'm going to pin them to hold them in place. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the sewing machine and you're gonna sew a quarter inch on each sides of these lines. So do not stitch on the line, stitch a quarter inch on both sides. So basically, quarter inch on both sides, and then a quarter inch on both sides. I have a quarter inch foot on my baby lock machine that I just line up right with that line, 
and it gives me a nice quarter inch seam right on the other side. Okay, so once that is done, you end up with this. Yep, it's all sewed. Hopefully you can see that okay. Can we get a spacer? There we go. Those are my lines. So you've got your lines that you drew and then a quarter inch on each side. And I personally like to use this wonderful 12 inch Ulfa rotating mat because here's what we're going to do. Now that you've got your, your seams, your lines sewn on both sides of those lines, what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and you're going to cut right down the middle. So you're going to cut here in the middle and then <laughs> we got a reflection from the light. There we go. You're going to right down here in the middle and then we're going to do it again this way. So a key thing is you're going to have this nice little square in the middle where your lines are all lined up. That's where you're going to want to cut right through to make this nice and accurate. Okay, lift your ruler up very carefully. For me, I spin my mat. I'm going to get that other. And usually I try and line up straight at the top too. But in general, the most important aspect is getting there in the center. Okay, I've got my other cut. Now, the last things you want to do, once again, don't move it. But if it's easier for you now to pick up each of these cut pieces and do the last cut, that's completely fine. Because at this point, you are going to cut on the lines that you drew. So you're going to cut corner to corner. And this is why you sewed a quarter inch on both sides of the lines you drew. Voila! We have it all. And what do we have? Two, four, six, eight. We have eight pieces and they are each a wonderful half square triangle. Yep. So now we have our eight half square triangles. Now, we only need to use six of them. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna finger press these and I am pressing to the, for me, it's kind of like my, it's a half a dozen of one, six of the other. In the fact that I consider my red, I might refer to that as my background fabric and then my print. And so on that, I am pressing all of my squares to the red side. So they're all being pressed to the red side. And that way, when we start to sew this block together, things piece very nicely. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna finger press those, and then I take them to the sewing machine and press them. It is very, very important for you to press your pieces and have them all nice so the seams aren't, you know, they're all nice and pressed out before we trim them. I now have all of my half square triangles all pressed nice and neat. And now we're going to trim them. I am using a six inch square um, OmniGrid ruler. What I love about this one is it has um, corners and then uh, great lines, but also my diagonal line in the middle. My diagonal line is super important when trimming up these blocks because the key thing is you can't just put your ruler on here and trim up a three and a half inch. You have to make sure your corners line up on your diagonal. So as I said, if you're using a seven and three quarters inch square, you do not have much wiggle room. And I happen to be doing that right now, which is why I decided to tell you, you know, you might want to go with an eight inch square and you'll be much happier. So I don't have a lot of wiggle room, pretty much just what I need. Key thing is get your corner down here, line up on your angle and your corner down here. So here's my three and a half inch corner and there's the tip. And so there is not much trimming which is going to be done other than that pesky tail. Then you flip it around and now this is your good side. You're trimmed off and it's it's nice and even and square. So you line that right up against your three and a half inch line. Your diagonal should still match. 
and perfect. Just got a little bit. So even though you think these might be perfectly three and a half, go through them all and get them all trimmed up so they are perfect. Okay, now, get rid of that. I actually have a whole bunch of squares ready to go. Oh, you're also going to want <laughs> a few more three and a half inch blocks. You need two of your red, which I'm referring to as my background fabric, and one for your center, which matches the opposite of your hourglass. Now, with that said, you can do whatever you want with this. Scrappy, three colors, whatever. If you do that, just be aware that you're gonna to need to make more sets of half square triangles because doing it this way, we're making our half square triangles with two colors of fabric and that is it. But there are plenty of other methods out there to create half square triangles one at a time with different types of fabric. So just keep that in mind. But we're making it super, super easy. And so we're gonna lay it out Put our solid in the middle. So basically our squares are at an angle. And then that triangle points the middle. So we've got our, our triangles pointing our middle this way. And then we intersperse our other ones the opposite. Basically what I've done always is do one block first. Lay it out. Make sure you have it right before you go making 10 blocks, one right after the other and having everything done and discovering, oh crud, I have that backwards. You won't be very happy. And the reason I know this is because I've done this. <laughs> this is why I always do one block first and then I've got my finished block and I usually have it sitting in front of me and going, okay, okay, lay it out, lay it out, and we're good to go. Okay, so there we go. Now, what we do is we're going to just stitch them together in, in rows. First thing we do is put this over to there, this over to there, and that over there. And then we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and sew a quarter of an inch on each of these. Now, I always like to sew with my pieced block up. So this, there's no seams on this one. So I like to have that on the bottom. That way I can make sure that this little seam there doesn't get caught wonky under my presser foot. So I just like to have it facing up when I sew it and it won't matter. It doesn't matter which direction you sew it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make these all nice and then I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna go to the sewing machine, and I'm just change, chain piece them. I'm gonna put this one under my presser foot, and sew, and then this one right under it, and sew, and this one right under it. And then, once that's done, we'll come back, and we'll do the next row. So as I said, I went to the sewing machine, and I just sewed my quarter inch seam on each of those. As you can see, I did not cut between every square. It makes it go super fast. And then, and, and for some people, what they'll do is they'll just do this at the sewing machine. And then as long as they've piled these up in this order, they can just take these to the sewing machine. And then while you're sitting there, you open up the top one and you put the top one on it and you can sew it. And then you can open up the next one and do this. And they're all in order. I'm, well, cause I'm trying to show you how to do this. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna clip each of these, there we go. Okay, and there's no need to press at this step. See, the other good reason, once again, I'm comparing this to my one that I've already done to make sure I have this right. The reason I had you press everything to one side, to one color, is because when you start square uh, sewing these squares together that your your corners are gonna match with those seams. If both are pressed to the same side, they just nest very, very nicely. Okay, so now we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. 
and we're gonna do that one. And I'm gonna tip, whoops, nope, this is the way I want it, where I've got that on top. So I'm gonna straighten these out and I'm gonna sew the same things. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, and at this point, I'm gonna have three rows of fabric. At this point, it's very important to press. And what I do is, I'm gonna show you this now, and I'll point it out again later, is the middle, I press to the inside because there's no seams in this square. So I press to the inside. Then my other two rows, I press to the outside. So I'll show you that in a minute. Now we have all three of our rows completed. I've laid them out to match my original that I had done before, so I know they're laid out right. So we've got this nice black in the middle and then our half square triangles angle down and in the corner. Now, these I press to the outside. So my top and my bottom I press to the outside and the inside one I press to the inside. Easiest way to remember is press your, in, your middle to the inside because there's no seams on it. Then that makes it really easy to now we're going to sew our rows together. So we're going to flip that over and everything should nest nice and neatly because our seams are going in the opposite direction. And our corner. Now, here, you've got your corners are going to match, so kind of nest your seams in there and get your, get your corners nice and neat. And the same, this one we're just going to nest. We don't have any, you know, matching seams, seams for our corners. And then we've got our corner. Okay, now, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the sewing machine and sew there. Right there is a seam and it's where your your seams all cross. So what you want to do is with your quarter inch seam keep an eye on that because that point where they cross should be your exact quarter inch down from the top if everything's going together well. And that way as long as you hit that you are going to have nice pretty points on your squares and your half square triangles and you're not going to cut off any points. So I'm going to go sew that together because then what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and then you're gonna put this on and do the same thing. So let me, I'm gonna just show you quick here cause we're gonna do this in, we're gonna kinda of do this in one step here. Ah. So once I have this row sewed together, make sure you keep this in your middle. Then we're gonna put this and put it there. Once again, match your seams, match your points and sew there. And then when you're done, you'll have a finished block. And voila, we have our block done. Yup, there you go. That is all it takes. Pretty simple. And isn't that pretty? Now what I would do is I, this is quite a bit of bulk in your corners here with, with those points. So what I like to do is pinwheel it. So basically, you take one side of your seam and go one way and the other the other way and you can tell it's going to fight you if you try and do it the wrong way but if you do it the right way those middle corners turn in the seams just kind of come apart and they turn into nice little pinwheels there and then then let's see so these two are so then I can I know I'm going to finger press those to my inside, which means those are to my outside, my outside, and then it's going to be my inside. So I finger press them, and then I take it to the ironing board and I press it. And there we go. We have a finished split nine patch block. I do think that's very, very pretty. Let's see. There we go. Now it's laid out the way I've been showing it to you all the time. <laughs> I envision a holiday table topper with this. So you might want to stay tuned and, or keep an eye on my upcoming videos because I just might show you how to take this split nine patch I'm doing, have a couple more blocks finished and turn it into a table topper because I think these colors just pop and say holiday. And oh my gosh, can you believe it? It's going to be here before you know it. Take care, everybody, and thank you so much for watching. And I also want to say a special thank to my Patreon for providing me this beautiful fabric so that I can make wonderful things and demo them and turn them into wonderful projects. Take care, everybody. 
Thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate it. If you want to make sure you don't miss a single video I published, hit the subscribe button below and then hit the bell icon. And that way you will be notified whenever I publish a new video. But you can also find me over on Facebook, facebook.com slash Wendy, the initial J Haney. Or I have a Facebook group for those of that you that love quilting, needlework, books, wine, and wellness. You can find that at facebook.com slash groups slash life fulfilled. The name of the group is life fulfilled dash quilting, needlework, books, wine, and wellness. You can also find me over on my website, wendyjhaney.com. I will be doing more blogging over there eventually as I get more of my videos done. We'll, I'll be blogging about those. But also, maybe you see some things that I'm making here and you're going, ooh, wow, I just don't want to make that myself. Well, a lot of those products will end up over there on the website that you can purchase for your friends and family. Once again, thank you so much for your support and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.